This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from opentuition.com. All right, this is the uh, last lecture on the budgeting chapter, and it is a short one. There's no arithmetic involved, but um, it's a short discussion about what we call participation in the budget preparation. And what we're getting at here is, standardly, there are two ways of going about the budget process. One way, and the way that used to be the most common and still is in some places, is that if I'm the person in charge, I prepare the budgets and then give them to the managers. I do all the work. I say, we think we'll sell this many, we'll produce this many, we need this many staff. And so I produce the budgets, I call in the person in charge of staff and I say, here's your budget, we need 500 workers, off you go. I call in the production manager, here's your budget, we're going to produce 2,000 units in January, 5,000 in February, and so on, here you go. And that's known as top-down budgeting. where the budgets are prepared by top management, me, and then given to all the various department managers. So I'm telling you what to do. You need this many people, you need to produce this many units, off you go and do what you're told. The alternative, which these days is a lot more popular for reasons that, if it's not obvious, I will explain, is what we call bottom-up uh, budgeting. Where instead of me preparing the budgets and then handing them out to the managers, I get the managers themselves to produce their own budgets. They produce the budgets. I just check them and put them together. So here it's prepared by the managers. Each manager produces their own budget. It's then uh, checked and approved by top management. So those are the two approaches, the two standard approaches to it. The problem with top down, the reason it's become uh, a lot less popular, it's not regarded as, as good, is that it's not very motivational. You know, I've employed you as my production manager, and yet I'm just saying, right, you do this, you do that, you do that. It's not very motivational. Um, you know, the danger is I tell you to do things which you know are impossible. I tell the wages person, you need 500 staff, you can pay up to a total of $5,000, and you know that's not possible, you know. But here am I, forcing a budget on you, uh, and that budget becomes your target, and yet you've had no say at all in it. So it's not motivation. Another problem is, I may be very good at accounting, but I don't know precisely how we make our products, you know, what's involved. The managers know that, not me. And so it's likely to be less realistic. Whereas bottom-up budgeting, the managers are involved. You know, they know what happens in production, they know how the staff work and so on. They're preparing their own budgets. So it's likely to be more accurate, it's likely to be more motivational. However, there are still problems in that top management, uh, firstly, they need coordinating. Uh, 
Think back to what I said in, I think it was the first chapter, production manager may come out with a budget and say, oh, I can produce 60,000 units. Sales manager comes up with a budget and says, we can only sell 50,000 units. Well, I need to make, as top manager, I need to make sure everything fits together and say to production, no, we can't make 60 because we can only sell 50. <coughs> and of course, how can the, the person in charge of uh, the workers, how can they know how many staff they're going to need until they know how many units we're going to produce? Well, that's my job. I need to make sure they all fit together before they're finally approved. And secondly, I'm going to have to watch very carefully. Now think about this. Suppose you're in charge of um, labour and I've asked you to do a budget. And you, you think, oh, it needs $5,000 a month. But you know I'm going to measure your performance. If you spend less than $5,000, maybe I'll give you a bonus. If you spend more than $5,000, um, maybe I'll sack you. You, you know, I'll, I'll be unhappy. And so you're not stupid. You know we... We, you think we, we need 5,000, but to be safe, you might say, oh, I'll budget on 6,000. Because I budget on 6,000, and that's my target. I know I'll only need 5,000, and I'll get a big bonus. Now, I've got to be aware of that, and I've got to uh, question the manager and say, you've put 6,000 in. You know, last year it was only 5,000. Why do you need 6,000? It needs challenging, um, a checking. Otherwise, there is that danger that managers budget more than they need. Danger of managers budgeting too much. So again, it is regarded as a much better approach. It does motivate managers better. They have more knowledge of their department. <coughs> so perhaps better budgets. But it does need the person at the top, me. So as I've said, make sure everything fits together and make sure I've challenged them, questioned them, to make sure what they're budgeting is actually realistic. OK, so that's it uh, for budgets. The next chapter will look more at variances, which I mentioned earlier.